You may know his red goggles, but you don't know everything about the mysterious vigilante of the DC Universe, as his geek history lesson is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Jason Gadagun Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or super team from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And today we're talking about a guy whose name is what he does. Jason, who are we talking about today? Well, first off, I want to say that I don't own a gun. But second off, uh, his name is Vigilante. Okay. I made the joke. I have a gun. Oh, in yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. Are you li- hello, hello, <sighs> McFly. Oh, McFly. <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. I just want to say that Ashley has already checked out of the podcast, and um, I apologize, because I think Vigilante's interesting. Yeah? Why are we talking about him this week? Well, we're talking about him because he is on Arrow Season 6. Mm. Um, he is played by Johan Erb, I think is how you say his last name, U-R-B. That's what I would say. Uh, he is now a villain, mm. and he's teamed up with Caden James, played by the amazing Michael Emerson. And we thought, you know what? When the hell else are we going to do a Vigilante? Pretty much. So, uh, let's move straight into to the 10 cent origin of Vigilante. Which is the first part of the podcast where Jason is going to lay down all the basic constructs, abilities, and creations in case you go to a cool DC TV themed party and someone's like, yo, who's this Vigilante dude? I thought he was Adrian Chase. Guess what, Ashley? What? This is going to be, I think, the only singular, well, I was going to say non-discussion geek history lesson where we have no ten cent origin. What? But what? You want to guess why? Because there's a whole bunch of vigilantes. Because there are eight different people that have been vigilante. Good God! And I think even with that number, I'm missing a couple. Probably. But they're all in the lesson. Great. Uh, so you'll get all the info you need in the lesson. That's, that's enough. Let's that's go to meet cute. Fair. <laughs> and the, the meet cute is where we're going to tell you. It's a term we actually stole from romantic comedy writing, where we're going to tell you where we first meeted these characters and how cute it was. Because that's what I think of when I think of vigilante. Ashley. And how adorable he is. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, um, I'm gonna guess. Well, I'm just want to hear. What's your meet cute? I mean, I don't know if I ever heard of Vigilante before Arrow. Was it Arrow? Yeah. Last season, Arrow season five? Unless he's in J- Justice League cartoon somewhere. I mean, a version of Vigilante, but not the Vigilante that you're thinking of. Yeah, I'd never really heard of Vigilante before. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I've done no research on the character since hearing about him. This podcast is going to be very fresh for you. Yeah, so I'm going to learn a lot today. Um, so I really don't have a meet cute. That's a great story. Sorry. So all the pressure's on you today, Professor Jason. Where did you first meet cute uh, the Vigilante? Uh, Vigilante is a character that I had seen in several DC comic books. I didn't know who exactly he was. The red goggles and the white V is pretty iconic. I think it's actually good design. Mm. Um, there's also a new Vigilante that shows up in Nightwing's solo series, and that was where I got the impression, because the new guy talks about the old guy a lot, mm-hmm. and that's how I knew, like, oh, he, has, he must have some sort of a legacy. Uh, and we'll get to that Vigilante as well. Great. Um, since this is just hopping all over the place, let's just go straight to History 101. The History 101 is the main myth of the lesson. It is everything you are here for, and Professor Jason is going to lay down everything we need to know about, um, you know, a dozen or so vigilantes. That's right. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of vigilantes. All right. Now, the first vigilante mm-hmm. that we're going to talk about is Greg Saunders. Okay. He is a Western themed hero who debuted in Action Comics number 42 in November wow. of 1941. Now, this is not the vigilante that you're all thinking about. He's not the most famous vigilante, but this is the vigilante with the white cowboy hat and the uh, the bandera mask. What do you call that? The the little dungaree mask. Yeah. Uh, I would literally just call it a bandana. Like a bandana mask? With yeah. A, like, what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, a I'm, bandito I'm, mask. I'm, I'm I don't doing know. action for Ashley that nobody can see right <laughs> yeah. now. I'm like, what is this? What is this? You know, um, bank robber mask. It is, yeah. Um, and he wears a, a white cowboy hat, blue shirt. Um, he is the vigilante that you see on the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. Mm. Uh, but Greg Sanders, the spelling was actually changed to Saunders in the 1990s. Okay. His grandfather was a Native American fighter and his father was a sheriff in Wyoming. Mm. Now, Saunders 
moved to New York City, and he decided, I'm going to become a country singer. <laughs> okay. Yep. This is not where I expected yep. the lesson to go. Well, it's 1941. I know, but still. Yep. Um, he became what was called the Prairie Troubadour on the radio. Oh, my God. Yep. But Greg soon returned to his home after his father was killed because he decided to bring justice to the gang of bandits who killed him. I'm going to reiterate, 1941. Okay. All right. He even had a sidekick, Stuff the Chinatown Kid. Ooh, that is so problematic. Who was introduced in Action Comics number 45. So he gained a sidekick three issues later. Wow, he's doing better than Batman. Yep. Batman took like three years. No, Batman took a year. Uh, He assisted the vigilante (laughs) when a Japanese spy known as the head frames Stuff's grandfather for provoking a sort of turf war. We got the head. We got the hand. We got the foot. The Chinatown. We got got Stuff. We got almost the entire body in uh, Asian Mm -hmm. crime lords in the comic series. Universes. Now, a lot of his arch foes, uh, some of his arch foes, excuse me, were the dummy, who was a brilliant weapons inventor and professional killer who resembled a ventriloquist dummy in both size and facial features. Great. The rainbow man who committed Please crimes. Tell me he was gay. Please no. tell me he was gay. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say secretly he was homosexual, okay. but uh, there's nothing to confirm that he was. That's he just basically fine. committed color motif crimes. Like Rainbow Rider yep. would later. <laughs> and the vigilante also encountered the rattler. On several occasions. That seems fitting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Fiddler. Oh, my God. And the Shade. Oh, that's good. Did the Fiddler sing If I Were a Rich Man? I mean, I don't know. Um, Musical theater comedy. That's you know, what he came for. Uh, but the Fiddler, <laughs> I didn't, I'm going to say Vigilante, because he's the Prairie Troubadour. Um, <laughs> right. They played The Devil Came Down to Georgia several Ooh, times. That's a good song. Yep. Uh, but the Fiddler and the Shade later became two villains of The Flash. Cool. Yes, they did. Yep, so these yep, were yep. the exact same characters, actually. Mm-hmm. In the early 1940s, Vigilante became a member of both the All-Star Squadron and the Seven Soldiers of Victory. Ashley, do you know who the Seven Soldiers of Victory are? Yes, the Seven Soldiers of Victory are a mostly magical based team that Grant Morrison wrote this really dope series about. I can't tell you who they all are off the top of my head. That's the Grant Morrison version of the Seven Soldiers. Well, that's the only one that I know. Sure. Uh, What's the other one? Well, the original Seven Soldiers of Victory actually is what many people don't know, DC Comics' second superhero team ever. After the Just Society of America. Yes. Um, The Grant Morrison one kind of just takes the name. And also, Vigilante is in that series. Is he really? This Vigilante is in that series as an old man. Oh. Um, The Seven Soldiers of Victory, just like the Justice League, is their membership was basically, you know, all the members were everybody else left over after the Just Society made their team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was other people from DC's anthology comics. The Vigilante was from Action Comics. The Crimson Avenger, you know mm-hmm. that name, is from Detective Comics. Uh, Green Arrow and Speedy are part of the Seven Soldiers. They're from, oh, more, they're really? from more fun comics. The Shiny Knight is from Adventure oh, Comics. I love Shiny Knight. And the Star Spangled Kid and Stripesy are from Star Spangled Comics. Yes, and Star Spangled Kid goes on to be rebooted by Jack. Mm-hmm. John's into a lady. Yes. And unlike most superhero teams, this one includes two sidekicks, Speedy and Stripesy. Yeah, Speedy. Now, the Vigilante was also one of the few superhero to survive the end of the golden age of superhero comics. Mm. He lasted as a solo feature until Action Comics 198 in 1954. Wow. When he was permanently replaced by Tommy Tomorrow. Great. <laughs> uh, do you want to know about the man that replaced Greg Saunders? I guess. He's basically a future space cop. He's a colonel in the Planeteers. Mm. No, I'm not talking about Captain Planet and the Planeteers. There was a different Captain organization. Captain Planet. Um, they're basically a police force in the 21st century. So it's basically the futures replacing the Cowboys. Sure. Yep. Which was kind of the tide at yep. the time. I understand now, why you would do yeah. that. Now, the vigilante was later revived in the 1970s in the pages of Justice League of America when the seven soldiers of victory were brought back into active continuity. Like Green Arrow, his Earth 2 counterpart was a lost member of the seven soldiers, ah. and he did not participate in the JLA JSA quest to rescue them. All the members were then hurled through time after defeating Nebula Man. Now, the Silver Age Green Arrow, Black Canary, Johnny Thunder and 
Thunderbolt saved the vigilante from a tribe of Native Americans in the Old West who felt that eventually the white man would take over their land because they're lost in time. They're not wrong. The Earth One vigilante's contact with the League was limited to a two-part story where he aided the JLA against aliens determined to over-pollute the Earth. Don't (laughs) worry, friends. We would just do it ourselves. We would get to that in due time. (laughs) Um, His remarks in his first appearance in Adventure Comics that the League did help him reestablish his career and they even provided him with a new motorcycle. Now, that vigilante with the cowboy hat continued to sporadically basically appear as a superhero in DC Comics for many years, and he was later established as having a dude ranch in Mesa City, and that is where you find him in Grant Morrison's, mm. um, I believe he has like Mesa Ranch as they read yes, it or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Now that you say that, I'm like, that's yep. probably where I first met Vigilante. Now... <laughs> That's it for that vigilante. I just want to say that I love the phrase dude ranch, and I'm so happy that you managed to work it into this lesson. You don't like prairie troubadour? Uh, Not as much as dude ranch. All right. Because I imagine a bunch of California bros chasing after cows, and that's funny. Now, Ashley, who do you think is the most famous vigilante character in DC Comics? Who's, like, the guy? Who's the vigilante that everybody knows? I don't know. You literally said his name earlier in this episode. Oh, God. Swear words. Did I? Yes. I don't know. Uh, Adrian Chase. Oh, Adrian Chase. Yeah, <laughs> duh. Arrow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Arrow's really messed with my perception because I, I know that Adrian Chase is vigilante. Don't worry, listeners. I know you're here. Don't uh, worry. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but he's not. On Arrow, he's As not. She's like making Adrian. spitballs in the corner of the classroom, paper airplanes. She's throwing them out the window. Look, she's already daydreaming of summer, and it's January. There's no TAs here, kids, so all bets are off. <laughs> yes, Adrian Chase, I would say, is probably inarguably the most famous. Yes, Adrian Chase is the most famous character to have the namesake uh, that uh, you know of vigilante. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Adrian Chase is the namesake twist that Arrow tried to pull in season five. Uh, we and then walked back. Well, then they said that he no. Adrian Chase became Prometheus. Yes, there was never a, in that show that they said Adrian Chase was vigilante. In the comic books, Adrian Chase is vigilante. Mm-hmm. Adrian Chase first appeared as the vigilante in 1983's New Teen Titans Annual Number no. Two by writer Marv Wolfman. And penciler George Perez. So George Perez is the one that's uh, responsible for that very famous costume with the V and the red goggles. I didn't know that. Um, But he designed many a wonderful costume, so I'm not surprised. Adrian Chase is a New York City, New York City, (laughs) district attorney whose family was killed by mobsters. Mm. Chase sought justice in his own way as the vigilante. And after his initial appearance, he gained his own ongoing series. It was initially written by Wolfman and later included issues by even Watchmen writer Alan Moore, who did two issues wow. in the series. Um, Vigilante is convinced by the Teen Titans cyborg to not kill as a first choice, because Vigilante hunted down the criminal known as William Stryker, not the William Stryker that turned Wolverine into it's the animal Wolverine. that is, uh, <laughs> but a William Stryker who was guilty of many crimes, including shooting Adrian's friend, J.J. Davis, and then raping J.J.'s fiance. Holy cow. Yep. We are no longer in the prairie troubadour years of the Vigilante. Evidently not. This Vigilante shoots to kill, and moves along. Now, while hunting Stryker, Vigilante instead shoots Cyborg and gets Stryker to confess to his crimes and tell where the evidence can be found. Now, when Cyborg awakes in a hospital, he gets a get-well card from the Vigilante, which, of course, makes up for a gunshot wound. Oh, yeah. Um, And after this point, it was shown that Adrian took pains to make sure that he did not kill his enemies unlike the Punisher, and he would regularly use non-lethal weaponry to disable his opponent. So it was the idea that Cyborg actually made an impact on him. Yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of nice. Now, this is when, again, the, the start of the series where Vigilante is not to kill unless he's forced to. And this actually causes him problems right away when he faces Cannon and Saber. He confronts the two in their apartment, and he attempts to capture them, but they get the drop on him. And as a result, Vigilante gets stabbed, shot, nearly executed, and his identity almost revealed. Wow. Yep. Poor Adrian. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, um, he attempts at being a less than lethal hero uh, actually changes when he allowed a police officer to die as a direct result of his actions. Mm. Now, Adrian Chase operated mostly on Staten Island, New York, but he would venture to other islands, other boroughs of New York, such as Manhattan and Queens, and his suit included infrared goggles and shockproof armor. And he offer, often wore, excuse me, loose-fitting coats because it was the 80s and he had to look cool. Yeah, he got to look like a Rorschach. <laughs> but they were also to hide his guns. Mm. And he used a custom cruiser motorcycle with three different hidden rocket launchers because you need three. Jesus. And a bulletproof shield as his main form of transport on the mean New York streets. He also had a customized RV because I guess that was a thing in the 80s that if you were an 80s vigilante with guns, you had to have some sort of van or RV like the Punisher. Mm Mm-hmm. And it housed basically everything he had. Costumes, vehicles, and it even had a mini submarine. What? Yep. Did it have a dirty mattress in it? Uh, probably did. Where he slept at night? And um, a hot plate you can plug into the cigarette lighter? Yep. Now, Vigilante's primary sidearm was a semi-auto concept revolver. I don't know what that means. Now, it's a, just a weapon. Just a weapon. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm informing know, the students. <laughs> Keep making your paper airplanes. <laughs> Throughout the series, Chase was tormented over the justice of his actions and the pain it brought to others. Mm. He actually had a conscience. As early as the second issue of the series, Chase flirted with abandoning his costume identity after he savagely beat an ex-convict who turned out to be innocent. Mm. Eventually, Chase did abandon his identity as vigilante, believing that he could be more effective and also happier if he pursued his legal career and became a judge. Spoiler warning, he does become a judge. Really? That's just ridiculous. Well, he hid his identity. It's called secret identities. Nobody knew he was vigilante. Well, look, uh, I think it's it's wild that he goes on to become a judge with this level of hypocrisy. Oh, we're not done with Adrian Chase. Oh, good. But he gave up his identity as vigilante. Uh-huh. And during the absence of the vigilante, this is where we get another vigilante. Of course. You can't you can't have a vigilante void. Now, two of his friends, great, without his knowledge, assume the identity of vigilante. The first person to assume the vigilante identity after Chase was named Alan Wells. He was also a judge. Oh, my God. And a friend of Chase, who secretly operated in a very much more violent manner even executing petty thieves. Wells' first appearance is actually in Vigilante number seven, but then he became Vigilante in Vigilante number 20. Mm. And his mental instability eventually led to him to gun down police officers and civilians without abandon. Wow. Chase, though, felt responsible for this threat and this new vigilante and began a long investigation to take down the new vigilante until he found out that Wells was a vigilante. So what does Adrian Chase do? He kills him. Oh, Jeez. Yep. I was like, I don't know, sits him down and talks him on a roof. We're we're talking about a vigilante that literally uses M16s to kill people, like the Punisher. I was going to say, this is very Punisher ass. This is, this is, uh, vigilante, I think we could say is Punisher light. Yeah. I think we can really say that. Now, the second person to assume the vigilante identity after Chase was Dave Winston, who is Chase's bailiff in his courtroom. Great. He refused to kill. And traded on the fierce reputation of Vigilante to intimidate information out of thugs. Now, Dave debuted in Vigilante number 23 and became the Vigilante in Vigilante number 28. So by 23, they've got three Vigilantes. By 28, they have three Vigilantes. But he debuts in 23. So this is like, people make fun of... But he's not the Vigilante in 23. That's okay. Uh, People make fun of the Batman going through Robins, but at least there's years between them. (laughs) In two years, there are three Vigilantes. Holy smokes. Um, Now, Dave believed that the Vigilantes efforts were noble and worthwhile and when Wells was killed after ruining the vigilante's reputation Winston took up the mantle believing that the city needed the vigilante Yo, and when Chase Dave, found out, yeah, hmm? no now when Chase <laughs> found out about Winston's actions he chose to wash his hands of the whole affair and just be done with it when Chase and his girlfriend Marsha King boarded a plane for Europe it was hijacked and Winston as vigilante and peacemaker another sort of vigilante DC hero who we've talked about before yeah. both responded to the emergency but Winston was killed by peacemaker on the plane in front of Chase causing Chase to realize that he could never escape the vigilante's legacy. So, 
at this point, Ashley, <laughs> yeah, you would think, you know, hey, I think it's probably time to retire the vigilante, super, super violent hero in the DC universe, right? Mm-hmm, I would. Wrong. <laughs> Adrian once again assumes the role of vigilante. Adrian, no. And at this point, he felt it was the only way to protect his loved ones. Adrian, no. So the first thing he does is seek revenge on Peacemaker. Great. However, Adrian, he's been a judge. Yeah. Right? He's yeah. wearing a robe. He's I eating, mean, so you claim. <laughs> he's eating he's eating uh, he's eating some donuts. Yeah. Drinking that coffee. What do you think he wears under the robe? Do you think he wears the vigilante costume supposed, under the robe? No, you're supposed to wear nothing. Are you really? Yeah. Like a kilt? It's like a Scottish tradition. I bet he's wearing the vigilante costume. No, judges costume. wear nothing under their robes. That's gross. It's like the swinging genitals of justice. Holy crap. I can't believe you just said <laughs> Wait, that. Wait, swinging genitals of justice? Stop it right now. It is a clinical term, and you just need to uh, learn about it. It's icky. Keep, it's, Go back to your paper airplanes. It's icky. Hang on, hang on. There's some A-plus Foley work of me go. folding paper airplanes. <laughs> now, he's, Adrian's been having too many donuts. Okay. Right? Been wearing nothing but a judge's robe. Oh, is he fat? He's out of shape. <laughs> this leather doesn't fit right. And he goes after Pacemaker. Peacemaker, excuse me, not Pacemaker. <laughs> pacemaker. Adrian probably has a Pacemaker at this point. He would probably need one. Yep. That, that he notice. finds Peacemaker. Mm. Peacemaker beats the crap out of him. Oh, and that's un- satisfying. And unmasks him on live television. Oh, wow. This, of course, destroys Adrian's career, uh-huh. his reputation, uh-huh. and his secret identity and forces Adrian to become the vigilante full time. I mean, you don't have to do that, Adrian, mm-hmm. but I can see that you've done it. Adrian so tell me more. <laughs> falls victim to depression, mm-hmm. paranoia, mm. and more violence as he becomes even further unbalanced. Mm. He begins killing anyone who gets in his way, even police. Oh, no. And near the end, he kills cops and innocent civilians if they get in his way of the criminals. He eventually is so racked with the guilt of vigilante that Adrian Chase commits suicide. Wow. Yep. His death becomes public knowledge throughout the crime-finding community, and... There is later a scene in DC Comics that takes place in Purgatory, and Uh. they show Adrian Chase there. Uh. So, now, with that over, that's Adrian Chase. That's troubling on so many levels. Uh, (laughs) Ashley, I'm going to ask you, how would you describe Adrian Chase? And also, do you think he's maybe a too extreme reaction to the, like, super, super violent movies and comic books of the 80s? Um, Like, why do you think he's so super violent? I think you're exactly right. You know, I don't I don't necessarily fall into the camp of like violence in media makes people violence in real life. I don't think that either. um, But that was definitely a trend, particularly in in comics, in the tone of the 80s and 90s. And some great stuff come out came out of that. We got um, we got Dark Knight out of that. Um, We got a great Robin series and then some like not great stuff came out of it. And I think this is an example of that trend in storytelling going a little too far. Sure. Um, I have often described the Punisher in the past as uh, angry white male power fantasy, and I feel like... Vigilante is definitely Vigilante that too. is very that. Um, in spite of that, I don't necessarily think him taking his own life is the greatest ending for that character. And I don't like the implication that he winds up in purgatory because I think that's some real nonsense. Um, I will say this, though... Um, while I would never visit these issues myself, I think this character should come back. We'll get to that. Into the comments. Just save it. Just okay. save it. Okay. We'll just save that. We're, we're, we'll get there. But I think my answer to your question is uh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely yes. <laughs> now, before we go back to the lesson, okay. I just want to ask you one further question. Okay. Uh, you hate ads, right? Uh, not really. Yeah, we all hate ads. Okay. But we got to keep doing them because it's the only way to provide the podcast to you for free on iTunes. When you click on the podcast on any service, it's free. And it's free because we like to keep it free. But we're also able to keep it free because of people that support us over at patreon.com slash John. Even $1 a month makes a big difference. And, you know, it gives you these episodes for about 25 cents per episode. So all I got to ask you is, if you're listening to this episode right now, 
do you enjoy our contact? Content, excuse me, not contact. Do you enjoy our contacts too? We sell, we can send you contacts in the mail, that's sure. fine. But do you enjoy our content? Yes. Has it provided you with comfort or laughter? Yes. I'm not asking you, Ashley, I'm asking the audience. <laughs> I'm being the Go audience. back to your paper. Uh, then consider <laughs> then consider providing us the same by supporting us and ensuring that this podcast lasts. Patreon.com slash Jawman is a movement of mighty fine people that shout into the darkness and say, no, I don't want Geek History Lesson to go away. So why don't you join them? And thank you to our patrons that support us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now back to the lesson. Okay. All right, Vigilante's dead, right? Uh, yes. All right. Listen. That was a great lesson, Jason. Thank you. you did an amazing job. Well, it's too bad that the vigilante moniker is like a bad virus in the DC <laughs> universe and it won't go away. <laughs> we got another vigilante. Yeah, because we're only up to what five now. I don't even. I don't. I don't even care to count anymore. That's fine. There's too many. <laughs> Tell me more. The next vigilante is a lady. Oh, I was wondering if that was going to happen. Yep. Her name is Patricia Trace. Cool. She is a Gotham cop who met and fell in love with a fellow officer named Paul. Oh, Paul. Yep. Paul's the name of a nice guy. I have an uncle Paul. Mm-hmm. The two married. Oh. But Paul was killed in the line of duty because he's also a cop. Oh, this is mm-hmm. this is what they lifted that Dinah stuff from. And then shortly after that, Luis, Pat's partner, mm-hmm. was also killed. This is literally what they lived a dinosaur mm-hmm. story from. <laughs> Even though she took both of the deaths hard, she grieved more over her partner, Luis, mm-hmm. which is weird. Pat became frustrated with the city's revolving door policy of a justice system, and in particular, the protection of uh, mob killers or mob, you know, assassins. Mm-hmm. And she was suspended from duty by Commissioner Gordon. Soon afterward, she dedicated herself to being a vigilante, and she found the gear of Adrian Chase in one of his little, you know, little hideaways. Because he had a cool costume, yep. and so why yep. not co-opt it for a lady? And she adapted the guys. Um, she also later became Deathstroke's lover. Oh, no. Yep. She is a character that was uh, first showed up in Deathstroke the Terminator number six, and then Deathstroke the Terminator number 11. That's when she first puts on the uniform of Vigilante, and she was soon trained by Deathstroke and started to work alone. How does Deathstroke get laid so much? It's the eye patch. <laughs> it's that eye patch, baby. It's that, like old man death stroke. I'm also gonna point out something to you. Okay, I'm ready. Marv Wolfman wrote the beginning of Deathstroke's um, solo series. Yeah. Who created Vigilante Airy Dream Chase? Marv Wolfman. Yep. All right, let's keep moving on. Okay. Just want to put that out there in the world for you. I He's love not I love, infallible. I love Marv Wolfman, but he uh, he can't let the vigilante die. Well, I guess not. <laughs> All right. Um, then, you know, that vigilante yeah. disappears. Great. And we get another vigilante. Awesome. Um, do, have you, do you know who I'm talking about, Ashley, when I say Adeline Wilson? Uh, is that Slate's? What? You are correct. Yes, then I do know. Uh, wife to Slade Wilson and mother to Grant and Joey. And Joey, yeah. Um, she takes up the mantle of vigilante. Great. Yep. Addie Wilson goes insane and she dons a vigilante costume and comes into conflict with Slade and Ravager. Oh, yeah. And after her counter, Adeline was bruised but healed immediately and Slade guessed the truth. Slade's blood transfusion that she had given her early in the series gave her rapid healing powers, but it was also driving her quite mad, which was what led her to don the vigilante costume. During a fight with Ravager, Addie was shot between the eyes and presumed dead. Dead, but later in the morgue, Adeline wakes, and apparently she gains Slade's almost immortality. Awesome. Yep. And then after that, there's another vigilante because they're like damn cockroaches. I'll tell you this about um, Adeline. If they decided to do that in Arrow, I'd be there for it. Make her the vigilante? Yeah, totally. Um, I don't think... I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't think this version of vigilante is long for the Arrowverse. I don't, um, think it, I don't think it lasts past the season I don't, I don't think so either. Six. Um, and we've never seen Adeline as far as I can no, remember. No, we have not. Um, and I think that would be a neat way to introduce her into the show. That's sure. all. That's okay. just, I just wanted to throw that out Let's there. talk about this other vigilante. Uh, do we have to? Yes, we do. Great. Uh, we committed this vigilante geek history lesson and damn it, we're going to finish it. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> Late in 2005, DC published Yep, DC published a Vigilante limited series by writer Bruce Jones and artist Ben Oliver. This vigilante's name was Justin J. Sutter, and when he encountered a murderer as a child, he created a second personality in his mind. This personality, of course, is the vigilante. Yep. Jay at some point changed his name to Justin Scott Powell big jump there, and would become the <laughs> vigilante subconsciously. While Powell was unaware of the vigilante personality, the vigilante knew about Powell, and at the end of the miniseries, Powell was able to reconcile the two personalities. Now, this vigilante was last seen alongside Wild Dog and the current Crimson Adventure on a rooftop in the Great Battle of Metropolis during the final issue of Infinite Crisis. Wow. Yep. Now, the next vigilante... <laughs> oh, my God. Yep. P.S. We have a lesson on Wild Dog if you want to listen mm-hmm. to it. <laughs> the next vigilante <laughs> appeared in Nightwing issue 133 to 137. This is the one that I was talking about earlier. Uh-huh. He wears a costume very similar to Adrian Chase's. It's very updated, but it's a really good design. So is the white V on it? Yes, and the goggles and stuff like yeah, that. But cool. it's it's really it's way more updated. Um, but it is a brand new person under the mask. Now this vigilante shot Dick Grayson while he was oh yep, while, I know who this while guy he is. was in disguise uh-huh. and undercover with Penguin's gang. Mm-hmm. This vigilante also appears in Gotham Underground yeah. after his initial encounter with Nightwing, and he's just shown to be a formidable fighter, but is easily defeated by Batman. Now following the events of Vigilante Number One. In his new series in 2009, this new vigilante is seen out of costume for the first time because they held, they kept his identity very, very secret, mm. and he's referred to by his ally JJ as Dorian. He initially operates under the identity of Joe Flynn, a small-time criminal with a rap sheet, but is later revealed that the real Joe Flynn is dead, and this is an identity that he's stolen. Now, Dorian has the technology to graft another person's face to his own. Gross. And his assistant changes the police record so his fingerprint and DNA point back to his fake identity. Now, at the end of the first story arc, Dorian abandons the Joe Flynn identity and begins to make preparations to assume a new identity of a dead and forgotten criminal. It is during this that it is revealed that Dorian is the brother of the late Adrian Chase. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. At one point, J.J. warns the new vigilante about the dangers of pushing himself to the point of destruction, commenting that he saw it happen with Adrian Chase, and Vigilante describes his predecessor as a fool. He is a fool. This vigilante plays an important role in the Death Trap crossover of the Teen Titans and the Titans, and he targets the unbalanced Jericho for assassination, bringing him into a conflict with the Titans. Mm. Vigilante succeeds in tracking down Jericho, but he actually ends up having promised Rose Wilson not to kill him, so he instead gouges Jericho's eyes out to stop him from ever transferring to anybody else. That's kind of a smart move, yep. actually. This vigilante had been later been seen on uh, operating in Europe for several years before moving back to the United States. And finally, there is a last vigilante further than this one. Oh, my God. Currently in DC Rebirth, there's a series called Vigilante Southland, where a new vigilante is introduced called Donald Fairchild, and he's actually a former professional basketball player. Um, I have not read this series okay. um, because they didn't finish publishing it. Oh! Um, and the uh, I believe at this time of this recording that there is now a new uh, trade of it, so it's finally been completed, and I have not had a chance to read Thank it. Thank goodness. So, and he's also shown up in live action on Arrow. Uh, on Arrow, Vigilante is Vincent Vince Sobel, also called Vinny. He's a vigilante and former police detective of the Central City Police Department, as well as the ex-boyfriend and partner of Dinah Drake. And after nearly been killed by Sean Sonis, Vincent survived due to the particle accelerator explosion. And he has now become a metahuman with the ability to regenerate much faster than humans. And then he began a crusade against criminals as the mass vigilante publicly named Vigilante. Mm-hmm. And that is it for Vigilante. Ooh, that was insane. Yeah, there's too many damn vigilantes. It was more insane than I anticipated it being, if I'm going to be completely honest. All right, let's go into the recommended reading. Where Professor Jason is going to recommend some stuff that you can buy if you're interested in reading more about Vigilante. You can find these at geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading. You click on the little Amazon widget, you get what you want. Some support comes back our way. And you can check out a bunch of our past recommendations recommended reading at that same link. My favorite vigilante storyline is 
this trade called Nightwing The Lost Years. Yeah, that's And that is where the uh, Dorian chase, the vigilante, shows up. And it also has Nightwing in it. It's pretty good. Uh, but this vigilante actually, like, kicks Nightwing's ass pretty good. Yeah. So uh, that's my favorite vigilante story, even though it's not the original vigilante, but just go with it. That's fine. Uh, the second pick is Vigilante by Marv Wolfman, Volume 1. This is a trade of, like, the first... 10 issues of Vigilante. It's in print. It's very easy to find. So if you want to read Adrian Chase and all about his guilt and see him become a fat judge, this is where you can do it. Nice. Uh, and then finally, I would recommend Vigilante Southland. I only got to read the first two issues. I enjoyed it. And I think the new costume update to Vigilante is really cool. And also, I think it's really good that they they race bent Vigilante in this version, which is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, let's move into discussion, Ashley. We're going to discuss stuff. It's going to be we, great. We are. Uh, Ashley, you kind of brought this up but this is the first question in <laughs> Sorry. my discussion should a character like vigilante exist in the dcu does he fit um that's a tough question for me because comic books vigilante characters in particular like not necessarily uh metahumans yeah um fall into this category and and batman very much skirts this line of maybe not being great humans. And at the end of the day, um, superheroes are, in my opinion, something to be looked up for or looked up to. They are role models. And I think when you dive into this violent fantasy and there's limited recourse and there's limited checks, it can be troubling. Which is kind of what Batman is. Which is kind of what Batman is. Which is kind of what everybody in the Bat family is. Um... Kind of what Batman is. I think Nightwing is maybe the healthiest one of them. Yeah, but he's and still Bat a dude girl. just like swinging on the streets, beating up people. Yeah, but it's not just blowing people away. Sure, um, sure, but it's still just beating up on you're people. You're right. You're, but to me, there's a difference between beating someone up and killing them. It's a thin line. Yeah, sure. But it's a line. Sure. Um, Punisher falls into this as well. Yep. Now, I do think the name Vigilante is stupid. And two on the nose. But I think a character like Adrian Chase in particular in the wake of the the brand recognition that you get from something like Arrow, I think that character could be revived and I think that character could be utilized in an interesting way. The way I would do it is I would stick him on the Suicide Squad or a version of Task Force X or maybe pair him with Deathstroke or make him a villain for Deathstroke in some way. But I do think you need to impose a certain amount of morality either on that character or on the characters around him. Um, because otherwise, you it's... <laughs> It's a tough line for me because that whole power fantasy rage thing, I think, is dangerous. Yeah. Um, but I do think there's a place for him. I just think that it must be taken with responsibility. So th that was going to be my next question is where would you put him in the DC universe? Well, I guess I would put him on Task Force X is mm -hmm. what I would do. Um, I think, too, if, if I were the one bringing Adrian Chase back and if I were doing it in more of a Deathstroke or an answer to Deathstroke um, capacity, I would try to race bend him because the white male power fantasy blow him away with the guns thing we already have you know, a lot. And I think in this world we could use a little more representation. And so why not make it anything but a white character? Um I'm not sure if there is a better place for him. Do you have any strong feelings about where he should be placed? Well, definitely not in anywhere near the Bat family because I don't like the idea of because Batman's a very anti-gun character and I yes. don't want to put the vigilante in that world. I don't want to talk about that. I actually think go crazy with vigilante because obviously vigilante doesn't work because otherwise why are there 25 vigilantes? Yeah. If a character works, you don't do that. You don't keep giving his moniker to like 17 different characters. That's why Clark Kent is still Superman. Yes, exactly. And there, there is something to the costume. I do like the character, and I do think that name should be used somehow. Um, I don't know if I would make it Adrian Chase. Now, with DC Rebirth, that does allow the window to let Adrian Chase walk back into this universe. Um, I don't know if I'd do it Adrian Chase. I think I'd make it a brand new character, but I do like the idea that it is a Chase character. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a member of that family. Um I would go crazy and make him um, the de like a Deathstroke, but mm -hmm. he's in the Superman family. Interesting. I would make him a person where he blames all aliens for the death of his family, uh. and he is a now an alien killer. Mm, that's and, like, interesting. Update him so he has like fancier weapons, and like so you let you let 
Superman confront somebody with almost Batman's idea of morality. Yeah. Except he crosses the line. Yeah, yeah except he's a bad guy. Yeah. But I would also make this vigilante where he would kill a human. So, like, let's look at Supergirl season three, right? Mm-hmm. Supergirl season three, there's they have that alien bar where, like, humans can date aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this vigilante would kill any human in that bar that would date an alien. Yes, he would. And I, and I would put Superman in that morality tale and mm-hmm. be like, oh, but then when you learn about Vigilante's family, you're like, well, I don't know. His family was killed by the last alien invasion. Like I would, whatever the last DC event yeah, was, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the alien showed up, mm-hmm. that's the, the event that killed his family. And I would kind of make it be like Superman be like, oh, I understand. I have a wife. I have a son. Yeah. yeah could yeah. this be me or could this be Bruce? Mm-hmm. You know? Interesting. And that's where I would go with it. And cool. he has like giant, like <laughs> giant alien weapons. Yeah. 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 So, um, Ashley, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Marv Wolfman rebooted Vigilante so many times? Because a lot of these stories are written by Marv Wolfman. Now, do you think he did this to... Do you think there's a subconscious effort in his mind to show that, hey, being a vigilante with a gun is dangerous? Like, you're just going to die. You're going to die. I think... I almost think that's giving it too much credit. Sure. Well, what, what do you think? I honestly have no idea because I think it's a bad idea from pretty much every standpoint. But, but most of them are Marv Wolfman. Absolutely. He, uh, here's the other thing. The Nightwing story, The Lost mm-hmm. Years, where it's Dorian Chase, mm-hmm. that was written by Marv Wolfman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Um, I just, I, I literally can't rack my brain around why you would do it because it's mm-hmm. bad from a story perspective. It's bad from a marketing perspective. It's bad from a larger universe Do you think it's maybe the one character that he couldn't figure out why this character didn't take off? I guess. Yeah, and he just kept they bringing just it kept back. Giving a new identity and like maybe try a girl. Who knows? You know? um, because yeah, on every level, I think it's dumb mm-hmm. that a character who's only been around for that many years since 1983, um, you know, has that many identity. We've had less Robins in that time, right? Um, I don't know. I I guess it's like yeah, none of these are taking off, and this is the character I want to write. And I also don't know why Marv Wolfman just created lame Deathstroke. Like you have Deathstroke, you have Deadshot, and then you have Vigilante, who's like the least interesting version of that archetype. Well, Marv Wolfman didn't create Deadshot. No, I understand that, but he created. I think that's the hierarchy of these type of characters. Uh, But he created the best one. So why Mm -hmm. do a lame version of it? Sure. And maybe maybe you're right. Maybe this was his effort to try and make it stick. Mm -hmm. Because he was like, you know what, I have. Six death stroke children. So uh, why not vigilante? Sure. All right. Well, that's it for discussion. Let's move on to the teaching tweet. We're in 140 characters or less because we reject a little circle that tells you how many characters you have. Professor Jason is going to summarize everything that he just told us. And you can find this tweet at GHL podcast. Vigilante. Red visor. Blue stripe. Wait. There are how many vigilantes? <laughs> That can't be right. That's it? The little sad face emoji at the end. <laughs> you can add whatever you like to it. All right, let's move into the final section of our podcast, the Geek History Lesson Honor Roll. The Honor Roll is where if you head on over to iTunes and you give us a five-star review, we'll read whatever you write. And it helps us in the iTunes search for other it people does. to find us. It does. Helps other nerds yep. come and join the Mind University. Jason, who is joining the Honor Roll today? Uh, 5777 Hermes89 writes, Wow. I look forward to my commutes. Oh. Living in the Smallville of Oregon, I travel long highways to and from work. Although the drive is quite beautiful, it is very lengthy. Listening to GHL makes the time fly. Please keep up the good work. And 5777 Hermes 89, as you listen to this right now, I hope that um, it, we gave you comfort. And I hope you agree on your long drive that there are just too many damn vigilantes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for your very kind review. It's nice to know that we can help bring a yeah, little joy into people's lives. I'm glad that lives. we can make the, the beautiful drive uh, go a little bit shorter. So if you want to be like 5777Hermes89, go to iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and we'll read your uh, little comment on 
the show. It helps us in the iTunes algorithm and other people discover the show. While you're over there, subscribe to the show on iTunes. You can also listen to it on Spotify and SoundCloud and anywhere else that podcasts exist. Ashley, if they want to suggest future characters or teams or discussions, where can they do that? If you want to be a TA and suggest a lesson, you can head on over to geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or again, hit us up on Twitter at GHL Podcast. There's a bazillion ways to contact us in all of those places. After this podcast, you can head over to patreon.com um, slash Jawin, where we're going to do the Geek History Lesson Extra podcast that is exclusive to Patreon. We're going to be talking about the comics legacy of Marv Wolfman, Ooh, some of the characters he's created. That's a I great think it's going to be a, a very fascinating discussion. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jawin, J A W I I N. You can follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V Robinson and the podcast at G H L Podcast. That's it for Geek History Lesson. I am Jason. Too many damn vigilantes. Too many damn cockroaches. Step on them all. Inman. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson and Professor Jason. With your many, many identities, will you please dismiss the class? Class dismissed.